Hey guys, a very good day to you all. In this video, we will understand the temperature dependence of reaction rates. And we will also be covering topics like Arrhenius equation, graphical determination of actuation energy, determination of actuation energy, and graphical description of effect of temperature. So let's start with the video. Now guys, let us consider a simple equation over here. In this reaction, you can observe that A is a reactant and it gets converted into products. Now guys, we assume that this is a first order reaction. Now to find out the rate of the reaction, we are going to make use of rate law and we find out that the rate of the reaction is equals to K, which is nothing but the rate constant into molar concentration of A, which is nothing but the reactant raised to the power 1. Why it is raised to the power 1? Because we have assumed that this is a first order reaction. Now guys, when we change the temperature, so when we change the temperature, what happens is that the molar concentration of A is going to change only slightly. Okay, there is no significant change that is being observed in the concentration of reactants as we change the temperature but the rate constant k shows a strong dependence on the temperature which means that the change observed in the rate constant k as we change the temperature is significant okay so therefore what happens is that the rate of the reaction also changes with temperature why does the rate of the reaction change? It is obvious guys that when the value of rate constant is going to change with temperature, then obviously the rate of the reaction is also going to change with temperature because the rate of the reaction, as you can see, depends on the rate constant K, which is present over here. Now guys, we have understood one thing that the rate constant changes with temperature. But we do not know how exactly the value of K, that is rate constant, is going to vary with temperature. So to help us with that, Arrhenius gave an equation, which is known as the Arrhenius equation. In this equation, as you can see, here K is nothing but your rate constant and this T is nothing but the temperature. So this is how the K and T is related to each other. Now guys, let me introduce you all with the new terms. That is A, here this A is nothing but the pre-exponential factor and the value of this will be given to you in the question. And this R is nothing but the molar gas constant and you have to keep its value in mind that is 8.314 joules per moles per Kelvin. And obviously this T is nothing but the temperature and this temperature should be in Kelvins. You cannot consider temperature in degree Celsius. And I hope that you all know what is this term Ea. This Ea is nothing but activation energy. Now guys, this equation seems difficult for us to solve the numericals. Therefore, what I am going to do is that now we are going to simplify this equation to simplify the equation i am going to shift this a to the left hand side so when we shift this a to the left hand side obviously it is going to go into into the denominator am i right so as you can see it has now gone into the denominator now further on moving guys let us take log on both the sides okay so by taking log on both the sides this is the equation that we get now i hope you all know the property of log log of m upon n can be written as log of m minus log of n am i right and one more property of log is that we can shift this a power that is nothing but minus ea upon rt over here as you can see over here we can multiply the power Okay, now further on, we all know that log E to the base E is 1. Okay, its value is 1. 
and log of a to the base a is obviously 1. So, here we are having log e to the base e. Therefore, the value will be 1. Okay. So, our simplified equation becomes now something like this. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to shift this log of a to the base e to the right hand side. Now, by doing so, we get this equation. Now, guys, can you solve numericals with the help of this equation? Obviously not, because you use the log book to solve the numericals. And in your log book, we are having log to the base 10. But in this formula, we are having log to the base e. Therefore, we need to convert this log to the base e to log to the base 10. And if you want to do so, then you need to multiply by 2.303. So, wherever there is log e, you need to multiply by 2.303 and you can convert it into log to the base 10. So, this is your equation that we get. Now, further on what we are going to do is that to simplify it more, we are going to divide this whole equation by 2.303. So, after dividing this whole equation by 2.303, this is what we get. And with the help of this equation, you can now obviously easily solve numericals according to your convenience. Now, we want the graphical representation of this equation. So, to, uh, so since we want the graphical representation, what I am going to do is that I am going to write this equation in a slightly different manner over here. Okay. So, what I have done, I have just separated this T which is in the denominator. See guys, this part and this part is exactly the same. Okay. I have just written it in a, some different other another way over here. Now, why I have written, why I have separated only T? Why I have not separated R over here? Because R is a constant, 2.303 is a constant and EA is also a constant over here. Only the variable quantity is t over here. Now, we want to plot a graph. Now, how are you going to plot a graph with this equation? Observe one thing, guys. This equation is similar to the equation of the line. That is nothing but y is equals to mx plus c. And here, on the y-axis, on the y-axis, we are going to have log of k to the base 10 on the x-axis okay on the x-axis we are going to have 1 upon t therefore i required a variable quantity i hope you understood on the x-axis there must be a variable quantity and over in the in this part only t was the variable quantity therefore i have written it in a different way okay so this 1 upon t will be on the x-axis this C, what is C? C is nothing but the y-intercept, okay? Intercept on the y-axis. And it's, it, uh, this C represents, uh, it, it's represented as log of A to the base 10 in this equation. And obviously this M, which is nothing but the slope of the line, will be equals to minus EA upon 2.303 into R. Now, this is the equation that, this is the graph that we get, okay? So, as I said earlier, on the y-axis, you are going to have log k to the base 10. On the x-axis, we are going to have 1 by t. Let me show you. Okay. It's not happening over here, okay? Now, on the, uh, in the equation, as we have seen earlier, c intercept was nothing but log of a to the base 10, okay? So, I hope you all have got to know what is a C. It is nothing but the Y intercept. My bad guys, it is not C intercept, it is Y intercept. So, on the Y axis, this intercept will be equals to log of A to the base 10. And the slope of this line will be nothing but equals to minus of EA upon 2.303 into R, which is nothing but the slope of the line, M. Ah, okay. Now, guys, why is this a... Uh, slanting down. Why is this line going downwards? Because your slope, that is nothing but minus of EA upon 2.303 is a negative value. Okay. 
so minus sign was there therefore you have to draw a line which is going downwards i hope guys you are clear with this term now moving on guys let us cover another topic that is nothing but determination of activation energy so what we are going to cover in this topic in this topic we are going to find out a formula for activation energy and when are we going to use that activation energy formula when in the numerical there will be two temperatures given okay in the numerical they will give you two different temperatures and will ask you all to find out the activation energy at that time you are going to use this formula which we are going to derive now okay so guys let the two let the temperatures be t1 and t2 okay now for temperature t1 let us find out the logarithmic form of arrhenius equation which we have just derived okay so this formula is going to be as it is only instead of t i am going to write t1 okay for temperature t2 okay one thing that you all need to keep in mind is that uh, for temperature t1 your k that is nothing but rate constant will be k1 and for temperature t2 your equation is going to be somewhat like this so instead of t1 you are going to write t2 and over here you are going to have k2 my uh see why i have written k1 and k2 because as mentioned in the starting of the lecture as you change the temperature from t1 to t2 the value of rate constant is also going to change and you cannot neglect it okay now the next step will be to subtract equation number 1 from equation number 2 okay so after subtracting you land up with somewhat this equation now in the next step see log of m minus log of n can be written as log of m upon n therefore further on simplifying this becomes your equation and on the right hand side what we have done we have just taken ea upon 2.303 as common so when you take this common in bracket you are going to have 1 upon t1 minus 1 upon t2 now guys further on simplifying this equation we can just multi do cross multiplication over here and after that we land up with this final equation and this equation can be used when two different temperatures are given and you can find out activation energy or you can even find out value of k2 or k1 now guys we are left with the last part that is nothing but the graphical description of effect of temperature which i would like to explain you all on my book guys to understand this topic you must know what is collision theory of bimolecular reactions and if you do not know this guys then don't worry i have already uploaded a video on this so you can find the link of that video in the description box below or you can simply click on this i button which is present on the right top corner of your screen okay now i'll try to keep this topic as simple as possible okay so let us consider a simple equation over here a plus b reacts with each other to give us d now guys what is going to happen over here is that the molecules of a is going to collide with molecules of b okay and after they collide with each other then they are going to react with each other and after they react with each other they are going to form products now let's say guys that 50 uh, molecules of a react with 50 molecules of b so you are expecting that you will get 50 molecules of c but this is not the case if 50 molecules of a react with 50 molecules of b you are going to get some less number of molecules than 50 of you are going to get obviously less number of molecules of c less than 50 why because it is necessary that when they collide with each other they have proper orientation and they must also have sufficient activation energy this all thing i have already explained in that video okay so they must have both these things so out of 50 uh, you will only get let's say 20 for example you will get 20 okay but what was observed is that guys when you increase the temperature you observe somewhat like this graph okay so here we have assumed that t2 is greater than t1 
so when you increase the temperature the fraction of molecules which means that the molecules that were actually reacting after collision increases for example see this much amount of molecules were actually reacting after collision when the temperature was t1 but when you increase the temperature from t1 to t2 you get suddenly this much amount of molecules which are actually reacting after collision so i've just tried to keep it as simple as possible so i, I hope you have liked this video and if you like this video then please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and go check out my channel where i uploaded physics and chemistry videos they might be helpful for you guys thank you for watching this video